So when I when I first uh, saw this teaching, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was reading a, a romantic novel. And uh, when I read it, I was shocked that Rabbi Nachman could be so romantic. It was really pretty shocking to me. It's so beautiful. So this is uh, from the chapter 65. It's right on the on this side. Last sentence. And so she says, every single word is an entire world. When a person stands up to pray and recites the words of the prayers, he is gathering beautiful buds and flowers and blossoms. Like someone walking in a field, picking lovely blossoms and flowers one at a time until he makes a bouquet. Is this a rabbi talking? I've never heard such a thing from a rabbi. So, so beautiful. After that, he picks more, one by one, making another bouquet. And he joins them together. So he goes on, picking and gathering more and more lovely bouquets. He's talking about prayer. This is uh, likewise true of prayer. Oh, he wasn't talking about prayer. He was just talking. Okay, let's keep going. This is likewise true of prayer. A person goes from letter to letter until several letters are joined together and form a single word. He does the same for the second word. Then the two words are joined. And he goes on, gathering more, until he completes a single blessing. I found out that when I was learning this Lukate Mu'ara, my Nachman is probably one of the greatest writers, because he speaks so beautiful. He knows what he's saying, and it still reverberates today, and he knows every word that he's saying. And he's saying it, it's healing you. This is true healing. But let's keep going on in the lesson. And after he goes on gathering more and more, from Avot to Gevurot, from Gevurot to Kedushot, this is um, when you're saying the Amidah. Lakai Avraham, Lakai Yitzhak, Lai Yaakov, that's Avot. Gevurot is Mechei and, um, and and rain. And Kedushot is, uh, and you say Kadosh, Kadosh. So he goes on, further and further, the person that's praying. Who can extol the great splendor of the gleanings and gatherings that a person makes through the words of the prayers? And then when speech emerg emerges, it emerges from the soul. It is written, the man became a living soul. And the Targum says, he became a speaking spirit. Utterance emerges and is heard by his ears when he's praying. And our sages of blessed memory said, Let your ears hear what you are bringing forth from your mouth. Watch what he does now. Then the utterance begs and implores the soul not to part from it. As soon as the first letter emerges, such as the letter Bet of the word Baruch, it begs and implores the soul not to part from it. And the bet is telling the person as he's praying, considering the great bond and love between us, already they're having a relationship with this bet of Baruch. And the bet is telling the person, considering the great bond and love between us, how can you separate yourself from me? You see my precious beauty, my radiance, my magnificence, magnificent, magnificence and splendor? How can you tear your, yourself away from me and leave me? This is what the bait, the base, is telling the person as he's in Baruch. True, you have to move on in order to gather additional valuable treasures and great delights. And how can you part from me and forget me? How can you just say Baruch and, and leave me alone? I want to stay with you. The base is telling the person I want to stay with you. At least see to it that, we'll, that wherever it is you move on, you move to, don't forget me or separate from me. The, the, the letters are telling him that he's praying. So too, the letter race of the word Baruch begs the soul in the same manner. And all the more so when he finishes, the entire word is begging him, don't tell me, don't say me so fast. Don't go to Atta. Stay with me in Baruch. It's like a date, you know, he wants to keep the date longer. 
I don't want to go home. Let's uh, go to work late the next day. Let's just hang out some more. Then the whole word pleads in the same manner. Listen to Rabbi Nachman's words. Caressing and embracing the soul. Not allowing the soul to leave it. In fact, a person has to recite many more words and numerous blessings and passages before concluding the Shimon Esra. Yet, the words keep him from moving on and forgetting them, as explained. Therefore, the rule is, he must make the entire prayer one. Each individual utterance should contain all the utterances, from the beginning of the prayer to where he is at present, so that from the beginning of the prayer to the end, it will all be one, like love. You love a person, you love them from the beginning to the end. There's no separation. Love is an open channel. Thus, when he reaches the final word of the prayer, he is still holding at the first word. This way one can pray the entire prayer and, none, and nonetheless not separate himself even from the first letter because it's one continuous connection. It's just one beautiful, beautiful thing of Rabbi Nachman. Uh, we have more later. Yes? My question is that this connects with the idea of praying the most simple meaning of the word that's going on. Okay? Another thing is Rabbi Nachman. We'll learn some more later inside. We're going to have uh, something, uh, we're going to uh, honor someone that passed away. The family's here. And please give them your undivided attention. They're, they're part of the shul here at the party on the west side. I'm honored to have them. <laughs>